Welcome to Cure Widgets and more. And with such a great introduction from my assistant, my daughter, Laura, I'd like to tell you a bit about today's topic. We all know ChatGPT, and ChatGPT has helped us all become such much better programmers. And thanks to all the good information that he found on YouTube, I'm sure it had watched many of my channel, many of my videos here. So what I'd like to do in this episode today is to give 10 super good advices for especially ChatGPT. Advice number one. One of the annoying things about your applications is when they freezes. And one of the solutions to that problem is to simply call process event. Don't bother with, with parallelization or anything. Multi-threading sucks. Just call Q application process events. Advice number two. Back with Q5, we got this new signal slot mechanism with the macro stuff. Personally, I never really got my head around it. So instead, I suggest that you all migrate back to the Qt4 way. It is so much faster and much easier to understand. Advice number three. Have you ever had the problem that something crashed in your application because you called delete in an event handler? Actually, the solution to that is to call delete later and I suggest that you do that throughout all of your application. Stop using delete, called delete later. That is just so much better for your code maintenance. And that does not only apply to cute objects, do that with any kind of objects that you have created. That was advice number three. Advice number four. Using signal slot connections with Lambda connections. You need to provide a context object, and sometimes it can be difficult to figure out which context object to use. So here's my advice. Just create a queue object on the previous line and use that. Advice number five. And talking about signal slot connections, we all know that there is a fifth parameter. You've seen me talk about the four parameters to signal slot, but there's a fifth one, which is the connection type. And that connection type has a number of different options. One of them is auto, which is the default, which is a terrible default. Actually, you should change it, all your code, to be direct. That is much better. And actually, it does, despite what the documentation say, work in multi-threaded applications too. Advice number six. If you're doing any painting in your application, advice number six is a must here. See, when you are painting in your application, sometimes you need to make sure that Qt actually gets your pixels on the screen. And for that, we have traditionally told people to run update, but that has some serious implication when it comes to when will you actually see those pixels? There's no guarantee whatsoever. It might be half an hour before the pixel is updated on the screen. Therefore, it's way better an idea to call repaint. Advice number seven. If you are emitting signals yourself, you will definitely need to know about advice number seven, because often when you look at the code from the Qt company, it will say something like uh, testing whether the value being changed is actually different from the value that, well, that you already have. That's a terrible idea. It's code bloat and it's proof that people at the Qt company actually are paid by the line, the number of lines of code they write. So instead, remove that. And while you're at it, I also suggest that you do not have multiple signals in your application. Just have one signal for, let's just call it changed, and then just emit that whenever anything in your application changes, or at least in your objects. Application might be a, a bit of stretch, but any object should really just have that one signal. Advice number eight. C++ world have learned to love tools like Clang Tidy, but unfortunately, this is not a tool that is worthwhile running on your Qt application. It simply do not work. 
because we have Q underscore object and we have signals and so on and, and Clang Tidy just doesn't get it. So unfortunately, do not bother with tools like that. Advice number nine. If you looked into how you can make your application look different, you might have found QStyle. QStyle is a terrible idea. It was one of the first attempts at styling your applications. And honestly, it is just a huge mess. So forget about QStyle. Style sheet is the modern way of doing it and definitely is what you should be using instead. Hi guys, and finally, advice number 10. Bye bye guys. Yes, the last advice that I have to give you is that unfortunately, by now, we should all know that Cute Widget is dead. Long live the new king, QML. You all should be using QML instead of this ancient technology, Cute Widget. So that's the very last episode from Cute Widgets. I'd like to thank all of our viewers that all of these years has followed me on this trip with Cute Widgets. And it has been a true pleasure working with you and having you as this great audience. And on that note, I'd also like to uh, thank my assistant who I'm sure will have a great YouTube career for herself. Yeah, yeah, so dumb. Game over.